This is the New Life Rancho Vista podcast. We are a church committed to loving God, growing together, and serving others. Our prayer and desire is that this message from our campus pastor, Peter Moore, will be a help and an encouragement to you, regardless of where you are in your relationship with Jesus. So let's open our hearts and minds as we turn our attention to the incredible truths God has for us today. I'd like to be incredibly practical tonight uh, from Joshua chapter 3. And if you'd, if you'd like, I, I, I gave you some notes there as well. And we're going to go through it uh, rather quickly. And what I'd like to do over the course of the next few minutes is I would like to remind you uh, of some of the principles that we've shared and take this passage, which is, by the way, incredibly practical for where we're at as a church, and, uh, and allow the Lord to, to, to speak to our heart through uh, a, a Old Testament uh, wonderful passage of Scripture that really breaks down uh, where the life of faith can be lived and how it's to be lived. And, uh, and I believe that every offering should be an offering of faith. But I believe that this offering uh, is we're at a, at a point in time uh, at the church where, where we need an offering, not of sight, but of faith. Uh, an offering that would be uh, something where we just say, okay, Lord, uh, we're going to step out by faith. Now, if you like the recording of last week, I, I walked through the, the context of this, okay? So I'm not giving you heavy context of where they're at, why they're, why they're here. Uh, I'd love to send that, email it to you. Let me break down, though, chapter 1, because uh, I believe in, in Joshua chapter 1, it gives us five principles uh, of faith, and we studied these last week, last Sunday night. Um, faith is always faith in the power of God. Uh, the promises of God, uh, the, the uh, providence of God, the fact that he sees the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. We have faith, faith in the principles of God and, 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 of course, the wisdom and truth that we find in God's word. And then, of course, the presence of God. And all of these are seen throughout the book of Joshua but are, are showcased in the first chapter as well. Now, the second chapter of Joshua, Joshua sends some, some folks, uh, actually two, he calls them spies, but they were just really a recon team to search the property. And uh, man, they were really, God had, had told them some specific dimensions of the property he was going to give them and the land that they were going to inherit. And so he said, hey, I want you to go check it out. Now, for the last six months, I've been spending some time, I've been a little spy, okay, on a little piece of property about a, a mile and a half from here. And I've been checking out the land. I've been, I've been kind of looking at it. And uh, this morning I showed you where it's at. And I want to show you again. Uh, we are sitting right here uh, at David G. Millen, where, right next to the Red Star there. And uh, if you go down past Highland High School and take a right, uh, there, there's about 20 acres here, the best 20 acres to build on along the road there. Uh, if you've seen some of the tractors, they're do- doing some digging right here to put in a reservoir. And uh, they're recharging the uh, aquifer and and uh, they're going to discharge a lot of the water uh, coming out, coming down from the aqueduct uh, into this uh, into this valley here. And um, but but we're praying because these <clears throat> these acres, uh, these twenty acres. Um, are, are priced uh, right, right within reach, and uh, we, we put in an offer, and I'll talk a little bit more about it after, uh, but we put in an offer uh, that, that uh, we're praying that they will receive. It's just over $100,000 for those 20 acres, and at $5,000 an acre in Los Angeles County, uh, a mile from our location, is just an incredible thing. So we're asking the Lord, if you would, uh, if you haven't written it down, or, or, or if you haven't planned yet, Please pray that we can purchase this uh, piece of property and uh, pray that they would receive that offer this week. And, uh, and so I, I showed you some pictures uh, of the property. I wanted to point out tonight um, that this, this uh, picture right here could literally be anywhere in Israel. Specifically, it could be anywhere where we're about to talk about uh, tonight. And, and they're, in a, they're in the Jordan Valley, uh, right uh, about five miles from Jericho. 
And uh, this is what it looks like in the Jordan Valley right next to Jericho. And it's kind of unique. Uh, But, however, it doesn't look like this uh, right now. In fact, we have a picture of what it looks like right now. And we showed you this this morning. Uh, But I'll move over so that you guys can see it. Um, This is how green it is right now. And uh, we're going to get some more photos this week. Uh, Hasn't it been wonderful, all the rain that we've got? And it's even raining right now, sprinkling. And so uh, we're thankful for all the rain and the fact that the Lord has removed the drought. And uh, I, my prayer is that God would remove the drought, uh, the spiritual drought in our community as well. And I believe that he can do that. And so Joshua chapter 3, we're coming into, they've searched out the property, they kind of understand where they're at and what they're doing. And uh, they are, uh, they're coming into this area, it was, it was a wooded area, and it was filled uh, with these acacia trees. Um, the Bible calls them shittim trees. And, uh, and so these are the types of trees, they're very unique, uh, because it's the hardest wood you can purchase. The wood is so dense that worms cannot get in, and, and, and termites do, cannot eat it. And so it's an incredible piece of wood, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, that type of wood a little bit later. But they're in this area, plenty of shade, um, right near the Jordan River, and they're about to cross the Jordan River, and that's where we pick up in Joshua chapter 3 and verse number 1. And it says, and I'll just read the first uh, five verses there, and and then uh, we'll pray and, and dive in. It says, And Joshua rose early in the morning, And they removed from Shittim and came uh, to Jordan, and he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priest, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place, and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come uh, Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Let's pray. Lord, we're praying that tomorrow you're going to do wonders among us. And God, tonight we gather because we want to sanctify unto you, Lord, an offering. And God, we thank you for everyone who's come. Lord, I thank you for those who uh, are new with us tonight. God, we're so grateful that, that they're here, Lord, and we're grateful you've led them here. We thank you for those who've who've started a new life that are here, Lord, that are, are gathered, Lord, those who've been with us on this brief but, Lord, incredible journey that you've led us on. And Lord, thank you for everyone in between. God, I thank you for each person that would carve time out of their schedule just to have a family dinner as we sit down and, and look at your word and then as we give to you. Lord, we do want this moment to be a moment of, of joy and, Lord, a moment of celebration. Lord, I just wanted to pause and just ask you that you would empower us to give what you would have us to give. And I pray that through your people, you would do a great work. Lord, I pray that you would provide in so many remarkable ways, Lord, because of the generosity as a result of tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would please open the doors that you would want open, and that you would want us to walk through. And Lord, if you do want us to get this property... I pray that tomorrow they would receive the offer and that, we, Lord, we would be able to move forward and, Lord, one day build our own building and, and have a house that we could, uh, Lord, minister to people and, and Lord, uh, do your work your way. I do pray for these brief moments that you would please uh, work and move. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to look at four ways to respond in faith briefly tonight. And the first way is that when God works, faith waits. Can we say that together? When God works, faith waits. Now the problem is our waiting and God's waiting are two different things. Do you know what the serve team has done uh, tonight? They've waited on you. 
You say, what are they waiting for? No, 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 they waited on you. Do you know when the Bible says, wait, I say wait on the Lord? You know it's not talking about just sitting there and doing nothing. It's talking about serving the Lord, but it's talking about serving the Lord on His timetable and with His heart. You see, a vision of this future must be fueled by what God says is possible, not what we think is attainable. And so when God starts to work, we, we need to say, okay, we're, we're, we're waiting for God to do something because we don't want to get in front of him. We're here for him. He's not here primarily for us. And so uh, God never designed his church to be a solo mission. Uh, he, 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 pr- he presents the Great Commission as a mission for every Christian to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when they were right on the brink of the River Jordan, they had a decision to make. Were they just going to uh, you know, get so excited they were just going to cross over Jordan or, or do it their own way? Were they going to build a bridge and get over it? Or were they going to allow the Lord to do a miracle? You know, so many times I push God to do things on my timetable. I push God to do things when I want Him to do them instead of saying, Lord, your way is better than my way. Your thoughts are better than my thoughts. And sometimes we have to camp where God wants us to camp until we can go where he wants us to go. And uh, and a few weeks ago, we we set up the tent and we said that that a tent is temporary um, and a building is permanent. And uh, and I didn't want to set up the tent tonight, but I I wanted just to remind you uh, that, that the Israelites were in tents, that they were in tents on the brink of the Jordan. And you know what those tents meant? Those tents meant that God was about to do something great. You know what this building says to me? This building is a tent. It's a temporary dwelling place for our church. You know what it says to me? God's about to do something great. Because we're one step away from, 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 from being in our own location. And, and, uh, and, and while we're waiting, God is working. You know what God wants to do before he builds a building? He wants to build you. He wants to build your faith. He, he wants to build your ability to trust Him. He wants to build your ability uh, to, to give and watch Him give back and multiply. And, and, and so while we're not maybe building a building, He's building a church. And so we need to trust Him while we're waiting. Uh, he's working. And so God is, God is doing something in His timing. And instead of... Uh, you know, detesting and, and, and really running from a, a season. God's saying, listen, I have you in your season because I'm trying to teach you something. I'm trying to show you that it's not about the season you're in. It's about the power I have. It's about what I can do in you, not what I can remove from you. And so we, we come to these moments in life where we have to trust God at His word to say, I'll work when it's time for me to work, and you wait when it's time for you to wait. You know, it's been very difficult the last six months. There's been a lot of setbacks, but there's been a lot of open doors. And so we can't panic and say, oh, they refused our first offer. What are we going to do? We have to say, listen, God is working, and we're just going to do our part while we're waiting. You know, one of the greatest gifts we've ever been given as a church is right now we have the opportunity to raise and save some money while uh, we're going through this process. You know, it could have been totally opposite. We could have been under the gun to say, oh, man, what are we going to do? We need this much money by this much time. And God's saying, hey, I'm giving you the time if you will prepare pair. Uh, A few weeks ago, Camden and I were out making some visits, and I had to run into Starbucks quickly. Uh, Like I said, a lot of my time is spent at Starbucks, and uh, and so I said, hey, Cam, I said, I'm going to lock the doors. I'm leaving the van running. I said, I can see you. You can't see me, but I can see you. I'm going to run in. I'm going to tell someone something, and I'm coming right back out. He said, no problem. So I ran in, I was talking, I could see Cam, I could see the van, the doors were locked, the doors running, I'm right out front. But I could see him starting to get a little restless. He's looking. And then finally, finally I see him, I see him get out. Now my keys are in the ignition, the doors are locked, and I see him getting out. And I said, I am so sorry, but I have to go. And I ran out, and right as I exited the door, he shut the door. Lock the keys in the ignition as it's running. 
And I said, Camden, what did you just do? He's like, what, what? I was coming to see you. I said, I said, stay put. I said, now the keys are locked in, in, the, in, in, the, in the car's running, the, the van's running. Here's, we've got this new life van. Here's the worst part. I was parked in the handicap. <laughs> so you got these people driving by. Huh, new life. <laughs> Eyes of judgment. I didn't care. I got keys in an ignition and it's running. I'm going, Cam, man, man, you're killing me, man. I said, what, 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 why did you leave? He's like, I got a little worried and I started to think the worst. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I don't even want to know what the worst is. But he's like, I panicked and I just, I started thinking of the worst. You know, that's us. We panic and we start thinking the worst. Man, man, God's not with me anymore. God's not going to, God's judging me for what? No, no, listen. God has you where he has you and he can do in your heart what, what you can't do in your heart. You have to trust him in your season. Trust him in your season. Fortunately, Camden was able to crawl all the way through the back. We, the, the very back door was, was unlocked, and, and he was able to crawl all the way through. He had to wind through all the stuff. If you've ever seen the van, we're church on wheels, and we got stuff all the way to the ceiling. I mean, he, he did some acrobatic moves to get to the front and open it up, and I'm so thankful for that. But let me just say something, that God, God is, is, is working even when you don't see him working. God's doing some things in your life even when you don't see it. So first of all, when God is working, faith is waiting. But, but then when God speaks, number two, when God speaks, faith listens. Uh, thou shalt command the priests to bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you are come to the brink of the water, you, you will stand still. He said, stand still. But what? Verse number eight, what? Stand still and what? Stand still and listen to what God says to do next. So we're not just waiting for waiting's sake. We're waiting to listen. We're waiting to hear. Listen, uh, some of you in this room, you're, you're in the valley of decision. You're trying to figure out what's going on. Listen, when, 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 God, when God has you in a waiting season or, 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 or a period of time that's difficult for you, you're, you're always listening for his voice. Look at verse number uh, 2 and verse number 3, if you guys have it back there. It says... Um, that the officers went through and they, and they commanded the people. They were, they were commanding from the Lord. They said, um, the Ark of the Covenant, it's coming. It's, uh, they're going and, 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 and when you hear it, you shall remove from your place. God said, when you hear the voice of my people saying it's time to go, it's time to move, you need to listen. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so when we see God working, our, that's our cue to start following and, 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 and to start uh, allowing God to work in our lives. And every uh, faith step is a step where we're stepping out before we figured out how it's all going to work out. And I want you to look at in, in your notes, verse number 15, because um, it said that they were crossing the Jordan uh, when it was overflowing all of its banks at the time of the harvest. We have a picture actually of the Jordan River uh, overflowing its, its flood stage. And tragically last year, 14 people lost their lives in this flood. And you know what I thought of when, when, I, when I was reading this passage? I thought of the illustration we used uh, two weeks ago of the wringing out and the towel and how God can wring you out so he can fill you up. And sometimes God doesn't call you to move at the most opportune time. Sometimes God calls you to move at flood stage. Sometimes God says, listen. If you went when it was easy, you would think it's you. But I'm asking you to do it at flood stage so you know it's me. And so I'll get all the glory. God wanted to part the Jordan at flood stage. Will you let him part your flood? Will you let him part your, your difficulty? You say it's, it, it's way, way beyond help. It's flood stage. And we have to just allow God to speak into our life the area where, 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 where we think is lost and where we think it's hopeless. And he might be ringing you out, but he's just trying to show you his plan even during flood stage. And then number three, when God directs, faith steps. 
When God directs, faith steps. Faith uh, steps out. And, and there's this new territory that's often uh, uh, accompanying a, a step of faith. And whenever something new is happening, God is, God is asking you to, 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 to transition by submission. And, 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 and so he, he tells them in, in verse number 6 and verse number 11, he, he, he says, to take up the ark. He's like, uh, take action, take up the ark. And the people went, be, and it went before the people. Verse number 11, and the ark of the covenant uh, went before all of the earth, and all the earth passed over uh, into Jordan. And so uh, the, the Lord said, hey, get up. Uh, I want you to make a, a move. I want you to put the ark first, and then I want you to go. Oftentimes we want to go and then say, okay, God, come on, here's my plans. Here, here's my budget. Here, here, here's what I want to do, so, so why don't you just rubber stamp what I'm wanting to do? And God's saying, that's not how it works. I go first. And I wanted just to help you. We did a series uh, a year ago called First Things First, and, and we talked about the first factor. And, and a lot of you have asked me questions about that. What does God say should go first? Let me just give you a few things that God says to go first, okay? Here's some practical things. I think we have them on the screen as well. First, uh, there's three ways to put God first. There's, there's actually seven in the Bible, but I'm going to give you three. Uh, the first day of the week, or I'm sorry, the first part of the day belongs to the Lord. Uh, Jesus rose up a great while before day and gave the first uh, hour to the Lord or to, to his heavenly Father in worship. Um, the psalmist said, uh, cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. And some of you say, well, I'm not a morning person. Listen, you can have morning worship in the evening. You, you know the, 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 the Jewish time clock? It's actually evening and morning was the first day. It's actually, they begin their day at evening. Uh, for, for all of you uh, night owls, okay? So regardless of if you're carving out time in the evening or in the morning, you need to have a, a moment where you're putting God first, whether it's right before you go to bed or, 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 or right when you wake up. The first part of your day, whether it's before you sleep or after you sleep, should belong to the Lord. Many, many verses in the Bible about that. And then, uh, verse, uh, and then next, the first part of the week belongs to the Lord. And uh, I, I believe that, that there's a principle of, of giving uh, a, a day consecrated unto the Lord. He says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, uh, but exhorting one another um, so much more as we see the day approaching. And, 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 and even the apostles, the, the first day of the week, the, they, they came together and they broke bread and Paul preached unto them. And so uh, there, there's this principle of the first part of the day, the first day of the week, and then obviously the first part of your income. And the first part of your income is known as the first fruits. And in, in, in uh, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 9, it says, um, Honor the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruits of all thine increase. We, we, we call the first part of the first fruits, the first 10% is the tithe, and we give that unto the Lord. And so uh, God's directing us, and we have to ask, are we going to step? Are we going to let Him direct our steps. And then finally tonight, number four, when God promises, faith prepares. I want to end here with just, with just three parts to this promise from, from verse number five. When I read verse number five uh, a few months ago, God really gripped my heart because I truly believe that God is going to do great wonders in our midst. But, I, but I, I want you to know that it's going to take some preparation. Letter A, God promises the reward is worth it. The reward for stepping out when he, when he speaks, stepping out when he directs, the, the reward is worth it. And blessings will be steady, one author said, when we become ready. We must become available for God to use, for God to work, for God to, to, to flow through. And when we choose not to be available, then we cannot be available a blessing to others and we cannot be used by God. Uh, my son Camden got, a, got an award the other day and, and, and I didn't know what all the different words were, but this is the availability award. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> Chandler got the wisdom award. Like, availability. Well, sounds like they were looking for stuff. No, I mean, this is the award. This is what it says. But you know what? You know, 
Cam and I had a talk, and I was like, now, Cam, you know you're available to do more chores because you had the availability award. You know that, right? Uh, you know that. But, but would to God, would to God that all of us, when we get to heaven, we, not, we may not get the ability award, but you know every person in this room can receive the availability award. You know the best ability is availability. When you just make what you have available, and God, it's not much. I, 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 can't, I can't write a, a six-figure check. Now, if you can, write it. <laughs> but, but you may say, I can't. I can't write a six I don't have the ability to do that. Then listen, make what God has given you available and watch Him bless it. Watch Him do, it, do wonders with it. And so... This area that they're in, Shittim, it was an area full of these acacia trees, and it was an area that was lush. I think we have another picture of the acacia tree. What they would do is they would chop these, they would chop this down, and, 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 and it was a very valuable wood. Well, all throughout the Bible, it talks about this, this type of wood. And I put, I put one passage in, in your notes uh, Exodus chapter 25 in, in verses 1 through 5. I'm not going to share all that passage, but at the very, it, it, it's talking about uh, the children of Israel building the Ark of the Covenant. So the same Ark of the Covenant that's going to pass before them before they go into the promised land, the land of Canaan. Okay, so, so, so here's what it says. So this is the Ark of the Covenant, and it was made out of the Shittim wood, the acacia wood. All of this, okay, now it's plated in gold and all of this, but, and I'm not going to read all of what it was made of, but it says, he said unto Moses, um, speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth willing in his heart. Listen, this is not an offering that is unwilling. This is, this is not a guilt trip offering. This is an offering that's willing. He said, willing with his heart, and he shall take uh, my offering. And, and, and then he said, here's what I want you to do with the offering. I want you to take the gold and silver and brass and, and, and blue and purple and scarlet. He's listing all these things, but at the very end he says, and shittim wood. He said, I want you to take this wood and I want you to build something that will represent my presence to Israel. And so it's God's presence that is the ultimate reward, not things not a bigger check. It's ultimately the presence of God. That's why letter B, God promises to empower our effort. It is his presence that brings the, the power to, to be a cheerful giver. And in verse number, uh, and, and to be generous, in, in verse number 17 of chapter 3, I put in your notes there, it says, it says, all of you can pass over on dry ground uh, uh, across the, the Jordan. And he says, until all the people, everyone say all the people, all the people. That's the children. That's the adults. That's the young adults, the singles. It's everyone. Everyone passes over. Listen, everyone has to have a moment where you've passed from death to life. Everyone needs a moment where you've trusted in Jesus alone to save you. And, and one of the great pictures in the Bible is when they crossed over from Egypt, uh, from, from, the, from the pagan land into the promised land, one of the great illustrations is the crossing of the Jordan River because it, it, it pictures the, the crossing over from death to life. And listen, our name is New Life. And New Life is only found in Jesus Christ. The fact of the matter is he's the only way uh, to heaven. He's the only way for salvation and forgiveness of sins. And if we have not crossed the Jordan by God's power only, they couldn't cross. It was flood stage and we can't uh, deal with our sin on our own. But we must bring ourselves to the moment where we trust God and then he passes us over into a, 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 a right standing with him. And so he says, listen, wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. And he said, I will empower you, verse number nine. And then, and then letter C, God promises to do more than we could ever imagine. The, the word wonders, when it says that I will do wonders among you tomorrow, the word wonders means it doesn't make sense. Can I just say, say something? To the world, sacrifice doesn't make sense. It doesn't. 
what we're doing tonight makes no sense. May, now, eating makes sense. The, the chocolate cake makes sense, but sacrifice? G- giving to, to, to a piece of property that we don't actually own yet? That doesn't make sense. But listen, when we see through the eyes of faith, it makes all the sense in the world because God is working. And here's the takeaway tonight. The takeaway is let's give an offering of faith and watch God work. How do we do this? How how, how can we give an offering and watch God work? Well, there was a burdened pastor in Pennsylvania, and I'll tell the story and then and then we'll pray and we'll we'll give instructions. But there was a burdened pastor in 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 1860, I believe it's 1865. And he was really, really burdened. He, 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 I think we have a picture of him. He, he, the country was, was in a silver, civil war. He was, uh, the, 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 the fraction, the, um, just the division, uh, the hatred, um, the killing. Okay? It was, it, was a, it was a terrible time in our nation's history. And this, and this man decided to write a letter. To a man he didn't know, he wrote a letter to the Treasury Secretary, and he said, you know, in order to unite us, in order to to try to bring us together, he said, I think the only thing we can do is promote trust in God. And he said, I am imploring you to please put these words on all of our currency, in God we trust. The Treasury Secretary looked at the letter read it and wept and immediately wrote a letter to the, the director of the Pennsylvania Mint who started printing our money with President Lincoln's approval with In God We Trust. Of course, many of you know in 1950, Harry Truman signed it to, to, to be forevermore. But, but I will tell you, it was one pastor sitting in his home, burdened for his country, who decided to step out and just do something that didn't make sense. Write a letter. Who, who knows what he was thinking? Like, this, is, this isn't worth the ink and the postage. They're not going to listen to me. Listen, the world's going to look at us and say, that's, no, that's nothing. And, and we all know, listen, yeah, on our own, whatever we do tonight, it's nothing. But with God, nothing is impossible. God can do wonders when we trust him. And so we have to ask ourselves, are we going to live for, for, for the here and now, or are we going to allow God to be the one that we're putting our trust in? Let me ask you, is your trust in, in worldly goods, or is your trust in God? We can say, oh yeah, I trust in God. Do you? Are we willing to step out by faith and trust him? Uh, the first week we talked about the fact that when we get to heaven, our choices will be, will be cemented in time. Heaven, when, we, when, we, when we're with the Father eternally, there is no choice. We've already made our choice. So, so, so the only choice we have is to worship Him. It's going to be wonderful. And of course we have choices of who to talk to, and it's going to be wonderful. It's not going to be robotic. But my point is, right now our choices matter. When we have a, 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 a stone heart, a hard heart, we have a closed hand. But when we have a soft heart, we'll have an open hand to say, God, what do you want me to do? And, and, and here's what I'm praying. I'm praying that, that, that our, our motive and our spirit would not be wood, hay, and stubble, but would be precious stones that will one day be laid up in an eternal uh, weight of glory to say, God, these rewards will last forever and we will take the crowns and the jewels that we've been, that we've been given as a reward to what we've done here on earth and we will cast them at our Savior's feet because of what he's done for us. And so let me read you the verse that we ended with last week because I just felt like it, it, it sums up where we're at. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. 
for faithful is he that promised. Listen, hold on to something that's eternal by giving something that will last for eternity. And we, we hold forth the promise that he will always provide for us and that he will supply every need and that if we invest, he multiplies. Thanks again for listening. If you would like to learn more about our church or how to get connected, check us out online at findnewlife.church or find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook under the handle Find New Life. Have an amazing day.